Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I've received a lot of technical questions, particularly regarding antennas, in uh, the past couple of days. And I have to confess that most of these technical questions are over my head. They're too complicated for me. Uh, I'm an old timer and I uh, deal mainly with the practical aspects of antennas. That is, uh, you put up a prototype and you trim it and test it with real world practical available instruments such as a standing wave ratio meter and uh, you make sure that it doesn't have any intermittent contacts in it which are obvious when you see the standing wave ratio fluctuating for no apparent reason. Uh, but one question was very interesting and that is what effect does the insulation on an antenna wire have on the performance of an antenna? For example, if you use uh, copper clad steel wire without any insulation. For one thing, copper clad steel wire won't stretch. It'll stay the same length. It's stronger. The skin effect ensures that you get adequate conduction in the antenna wire itself. And uh, there's no insulation to worry about. The only thing you have to worry about is if something should happen to come into contact with your antenna, like a a blowing tree branch or something like that, or if there's a snowstorm or ice storm and you get an accumulation of material on that wire. But otherwise, uh, you really needn't have any concern about the insulation, and that is why uh, bare copper, generally 10 gauge or 12 gauge copper clad steel wire is recommended for such things as dipole antennas and random wire antennas. But if you put in, if the wire happens to have insulation on it, it's a dielectric material, uh, to what extent does that affect antenna performance? And my first impression is that in general, it has very little, if any, practical effect. But when you get into mathematical equations with dielectric constant and the effect to on the length of an antenna or the extent to which it might dissipate uh, electromagnetic energy as heat radiated from the antenna or interfere with reception, I really have no clue. I have to honestly say the short answer to that question is I don't know. <laughs> I don't think in most cases that insulation has much if any effect on antenna wire but I don't really know. It's like, uh, I think that somebody's getting into my car and taking my munchies, but I don't really know. You know, you know that kind of thing. Uh, last night, by the way, the mysterious munchies, the way they keep disappearing from my car, it's either because my, I've become so forgetful that I forgot that I ate them, or more likely, that something's getting in there and getting at them, but I don't know what. And it's a great, well, a great mystery, and the short answer is I don't know. I, last night though, I put a package of really good munchies out in my car, wedged it against the gear shift stick, and put a little piece of paper, or a pretty big piece of paper, a sign in front of uh, that bag of munchies saying, Bon Appetit! So if somebody really is getting into my garage and stealing my munchies with somehow not setting off the car alarm or making noise with the garage door that would wake me up, if that's really happening, it's no big deal to me, no big loss. I don't know what, what's happening with those munchies and I don't know what's happening with um, ordinary insulation on antenna wire. One thing though and one precaution that I would uh, admonish you about about wire antennas is use copper clad steel wire not soft drawn copper wire in any case because soft drawn copper wire will stretch 
and change the resonant frequency, the character or the impedance at the feed point and the standing wave ratio over time. But copper clad steel wire will tend to maintain its length even under stress. And to, to, unless the temperature swings to extremes, it should stay pretty much the same length. The only thing is, uh, you know, if there's, don't connect it to objects that move like swaying tree branches and all of that. But my answer to your question about what mathematical effect would a certain dielectric constant have on the resonant frequency, impedance, and standing wave ratio, honest to gosh, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know if anybody really does. And if it did, the equations in the mathematics would be so complicated that nobody would understand it except maybe my nephew. Anyway, oh, congrats to my nephew. He's in graduate school now, and he's majoring in mathematics. Someday he's going to be a professor of statistics at some prestigious university and he'll outdo his uncle. All I ever really wanted to be when I was a kid was an astronomer. Well, things never work out quite the way you think they will, either in real life or in antenna life. Stan Jubilisco, W1GV, saying 73 and so long, which no matter what the dielectric constant of the insulation on your antenna wire might be, will always translate to di di da di da